Hello and welcome to the program. I am Deji Vadimasi. As the 2023 presidential election draws closer by the day, political parties are leaving nothing to chance as uh, each of them prepared to emerge winner of the polls, especially the two major political parties in the country, the All Progressives Congress and uh, the main opposition, People's Democratic Party, PDP. Now, the ruling APC last week announced the appointment of Plateau State Governor Simon Lalong as the chairman of the party's presidential campaign council, while the Minister of State for Labor, Festus Kiyamo, uh, will serve as the spokesperson of the campaign council. The national chairman of the party, Abdullahi Adamu, made the announcement after briefing, while briefing journalists now, after he led the party's presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tunubu, and the vice presidential candidate, Kashim Shatima to see President Mohamedou Buhari. When asked why the party arrived at the choice of Lalong as a campaign director general, he said it was based on the governor's ability to deliver. Take a lesson now to what uh, the national chairman said. Talking to our members, aligning their thoughts, emotions, and sentiments along what the party has done, in relation to the choice of our candidate is a minimum irreducible position of responsibility we owe the party. Every one of us has a duty inherent in his loyalty to the party to stand shoulder to shoulder with our candidate. Any sort of that is sabotage and will treat as such. As long as we, I, I, I want to just urge, plead to you, why don't you see the positive ends of what we're doing? Why do you want to pick on the negatives and magnify them? It doesn't pay. Now, the thinking of some people is that uh, the party may have decided to settle for La Long there because uh, maybe somehow to appease uh, people now, especially Christians in the country who have been complaining. I'm talking about some Christians now who have been complaining about uh, the so-called Muslim Muslim ticket of uh, the APC. Now, the opposition People's Democratic is also not left out as its presidential candidate announced Senator Dino Melae and Daniel Bwala as uh, his campaign spokesperson, asking them to resume duty with immediate effect. Meanwhile, the dust over the party's presidential primary and the choice of Delta State Governor Ifan Yokoa as the vice presidential candidate has not settled. Although Atiku Abubakar and the River State Governor Nyasom Wike met in Abuja at the instance of the party's board of trustees, there are, however, reports that the meeting did not lead to a truce. And so we understand there's likely going to be more meetings ahead as. Uh, Governor Wike is said to have put uh, his conditions before uh, the presidential candidate of the party. So we'll wait for the outcome of that. But uh, it's not all done and dusted in the PDP because they still have their own challenge. Joining me now to discuss this and more is uh, public affairs analyst Tosin Akande. Thank you very much, Mr. Akande, for joining us on the program. Um, let's start off with the PDP and start off with that meeting that uh, uh, Atiku Abubakar had with Nyesom Wike, the governor of River State. Uh, you, you look at what has been happening after that uh, presidential primary that the party had. I mean, you just would not expect that uh, the, the party should be having the kind of problems it's having now. Do you think uh, both men will be able to resolve their differences and uh, come together and work towards... Uh, towards a victory, if you like, uh, in, in 2023? Well, uh, thank you once again for having me. I think uh, what happened, the immediate fallout of the PDP primaries between um, the party hopeful, Atiku Abubakar, and uh, Governor Yeson Wiki is normal. All right, so it's now, you know, it's left at the doorsteps of the promoters of the party, the PDP members, to ensure that they find the rallying point to put an end to the crisis that would normally follow after mm. such things. This is politics. It's the norm. Um, um, loyalists of the party have no reason to fear. So where they have reasons to fear is their inability to be able to coordinate the internal democracies of the how, party. How, ba how bad do you think? How, how bad do you think it will be for uh, the Atiku Abubakar's uh, ambition now, if you like? 
Uh, or how, how much do you think his chances will be affected if Wiki is not brought on board? Uh, well, um, um, I see a slim chance of his being uh, um, threatened if Wiki refuses to play ball. Honestly, I see a slim chance because uh, as an analyst, I'll be obliged to speak most dispassionately. I think because for many years, in, you know, in the running, he's been, he's been at the, he's been attempting to be president of the country, so his image looms large on the electorate. So many people already know him, having occupied the office of the vice president for eight years. He's not a mean person, all right? He's not a mean fellow to attempt the office now. So that's why I'm saying that, yes, I know Wiki is quite uh, charismatic, very strong and very much on the ground, but that's, as far as River State is concerned, to get. So... Um, that's why I'm honestly my opinion is that I see a slim chance of Atiku being threatened in the event of uh, Wiki not playing ball. No, the, the reason I ask you that question now is that, uh, you know, in, in some circles, uh, the, the impression is being given that it, it will be difficult for Atiku Abubakar to win the election if Wiki is not on his side. And uh, it, it would appear the governor himself is giving that impression as well. I've just explained to you why I honestly, this is my personal opinion, I'm not obliged to, to follow <laughs> Mutatis Mutandis, what others are saying. So that's what I've just told you the reason why I think we cannot play ball, or perhaps I'm not hearing you well, if what I'm hearing is that will we case, um, 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 uh, will I put, how would I put it, will we case um, disinclination from Atiku affect Atiku's yes. chances? If that's yes. what I'm hearing... I'm t and I'm telling you that this is the reason why I disagree that his chances will be, will, will be so much of him threatening Atiku. Because Atiku has been in the running for so mm. many years that his image has gone round. People might just, you look, for those of us in communication sciences and uh, the study of human tendencies, at times people do sympathy things. I, I, I think you can't rule that out in what happened recently in, uh, in Oshun State. People had the belief that that guy, Senator Ademola Adelike Jackson, was the clear winner four years ago. Hmm. All right? So people felt that, look, this time around, let's give it to him. Who knows? Anything like that or anything near that or close to that could become the fate of Atiku. So I am saying that Atiku has become so nationally known, he's, he's got the spread. So it might just be... And we case disinclination from him or his presidential aspirations might just be slim. That's what I, I'm still restating and, the same and, fact. Now, let, let me also ask you this, because uh, we, we understand this, this issue actually came up, that we can make it uh, clear uh, to, to the Atiku team that, look, he controls about five PDP governors in, in, in the country because they listen to him. And, and we clearly know who these five PDP governors are. We, we know that, you know, since Wiki had, you know, started having these problems now with uh, Atiku. These this five PDP governors have actually not been seen uh, to, 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 to be working with the party, if you like. For instance, when the, the party went to campaign for uh, the Ocean State governorship, uh, PDP governorship candidate, these governors were not there. So don't you think it's a problem, for instance, if Wike and five other governors do not buy or do not provide the kind of support that Atiku needs? Don't you think that will affect him? Honestly, my dear brother, to win an election or to win anything in life, the support of God is what is most needed. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and not the support of a particular <laughs> individual. <laughs> in fact, you, you have raised a very valid point that will just uh, send Wiki's uh, larger-than-life image to the cleaners. He didn't support, like you said, and these other five other governors. But still, the PDP went ahead to claim Oshun State. Honestly, we need not generate storms in the teacup, for, especially for those of us who are in the media. All right? Ours is just to set the agenda. If you've asked that question, and I, I honestly, it's, it's, it's according to the best of my ability that I'll speak on in, the, in mm. the news. I honestly think it's not going to pose, pose so much threat to the PDP if it has been destined that the man Atiku will win the election. We'll just end up talking about some of those things as part of the after news, as I can you imagine, 
Wiki didn't support him. Five governors didn't support him. In fact, let's do the maths. Five governors, five states. But you are very well aware that to win the presidential election in Nigeria, you can afford to lose five states and go ahead and win elsewhere. All right, so it's, the maths is simple. Very, All right. Okay, I, I, I understand All right. your point, even though some people will tell you, look, <laughs> politics is not really about uh, <laughs> destiny. Of course, I mean, th this is not to say that, you know, a divine intervention politics, is politics not Politics is part not of about destiny. Is that what I heard you say now? <laughs> I, I understand you. I want to get you clearly. Uh, yeah. But it, there's a lot that has to do with the, the fate of a mm. man. Look at Joe Biden of the U.S., mm. for instance. Would you believe it? that he's been attempting to be president of the United States since 1988. It didn't happen until... Yeah, yeah, you, 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 in the you, have, you have a point there. Let's, let's quickly switch over to the uh, APC now, the ruling APC. Uh, appointing That's right. the governor of um, Plateau State as uh, the, the campaign DG. What, what do you make of that? What impact do you think that would have? Ah, well, um, there's little or no reason to fear... Um, because uh, to have uh, the chairmanship slot to lead a group of people, um, what you need mostly is man management skills. I, unfortunately, or fortunately for me, I don't know the governor of Plateau State Lalong up close. So, but all I think he needs to steer the affairs of, of, of the group or even of his state is his man management skills. The one, the meat for me is the appointment of Festus Keyamo as the spokesperson of the campaign. Mm. You know, for you to have um, a spokesperson, he must bring his colorful nature. He must bring his uh, camaraderie, his uh, what stands him out. He must bring it to be a, in the office. And I think Kayamo is a man fit for that purpose, barring all odds. So for the chairmanship position, not much. Your man management skills behind the camera is what is most important and what is most mm. needed. The way you talk to everyone that will be involved in the team will matter. All right? You don't look down on anybody, all such things. We need mm. all those ones for a chairman. But for the office of the PR, the spokesperson, you need someone with colorful background, someone who is colorful by himself or herself. The very nature, the essence of that man, someone who must be able to make meanings all right, of what he is saying and leave long-lasting impressions. Kayamo has that, I, I know, going for him. So... It's a nice one. I wish them all the best with the Nigerian electorates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's it. But, but uh, let, let me ask you also, uh, what, what do you think? You think the appointment, okay. of, um, uh, the, the appointment of La Longna would appease uh, the Christians, especially in the north? Do you think it would appease um, oh, certainly people not. like Babachi certainly Lawal? Not. Certainly and, uh, not. <laughs> the, the former Speaker of the House of Reps, who, have, who have been, you know, all guns blazing against this whole idea of... Uh, a Muslim Muslim ticket. Ah, well, um, if I if I heard you very well correctly, I, I I am not of the opinion that the appointment of Lalong as the DG of the campaign team has anything or a semblance of the importance of the office of the vice mm. president. It doesn't. So the APC would have done far far better. You see, if you want to win, I, I would prefer that we win squarely and, and fair, square and fair. So, but, well, they have decided not to, to balance it, and they, they, they want to promote the Muslim Muslim ticket. Let's see how far it can take them. For whatever which of the party does, the best, as an analyst, the best is what we can mm. wish them. Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll vote, and I hope that um, the best happens to Nigeria. I'm ready to sacrifice the loss of my vote, in quotes, that the, a, a powerful leader that will take us out of the woods emerges come 2023. All right. Thank you very much, Dosia Kande. Thank you very much for your time and thank you for talking to us. Thank you too. Appreciate right. you. Okay, we'll take a short break now and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? President must see himself as the president of the Federal Republic. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On Digi360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion, facts, and undiluted truths. 
I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. The new Nigeria is possible, the future is possible. We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. DG360, dissecting the issues. Welcome back. Let's continue the conversation on uh, the issues now affecting both the PDP and the APC. I'm now being joined from Abuja by Abdurrahman Ab Abu Hamisu, who is a public affairs analyst. Mr. Abu Hamisu, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Uh, w w what do you make of the decision, the, the appointment of uh, Governor Simon Lalong of Plateau State as the DG of uh, the, the APC Presidential Campaign Council? What, what do you make of that? Well, um, if you talk about um, a very skillful politician that has really uh, ingratiated himself on the mind of the people that he represents, uh, you could um, um, say he's uh, number one. Uh, he's one of the few governors that are not associated with um, controversies. Uh, he's uh, somebody who is committed to whatever um, he's doing. And uh, if you understand the fact that the state is coming from is a very complex state that um, requires some level of maturity, understanding, and then um, in, in terms of uh, taking decision, consulting widely, you come to understand that um, uh, is coming with some kind of knowledge that the party needs at this uh, point in time, that you have a lot of issues um, that are threatening to tear the party apart, especially uh, the combination of the presidential um, candidates. So for me, uh, he's a gentleman, uh, he's a very disciplined person, and um, he, he knows the, the terrain very well, and he's going to at least play a critical role to stabilize uh, the party. Do, do you think his appointment will assuage those who have been complaining that uh, the, the APC uh, ticket is not a balanced one? Well, um, this is politics, and everybody is entitled to their own opinion. Uh, not necessarily. I, I saw some concern. Those that we vote for APC are decided. Those that we vote against APC are equally decided. Uh, the only thing that um, his appointment could do is to uh, give some persons some level of opportunity uh, to listen to him, being that um, he's a Christian by faith, and he's still a faith in the party that he belongs to. So. Uh, the dice is, all, uh, is, is, is cast already. Yeah, we're only waiting for the D-Day. Uh, only very few changes um, can take place. So as I said earlier on, uh, those that will vote for the party, they are decided uh, against all odds. And those that will vote against the party are uh, already decided. So in between, uh, it all depends on how the two parties communicate uh, with the voters. Uh, don't forget the fact that um, in Nigeria, uh, most of the voters are not independent-minded uh, in, in such a way that they could take uh, decisions on their own. Uh, there are those that can take decisions on their own and they are already doing that. There are those that will wait for their benefactors to show them the way and they will follow. So, so for you, what, what exactly does uh, Governor Lalong bring to the, the APC presidential campaign? Well, one of the things it's going to bring to the APC presidential campaign is to tell Nigerians that it is not all the Christians in APC that are against the Muslim Muslim ticket mm -hmm. and that there are a sizable number of um, Christians, well-respected Christians that are still within the party and that uh, APC is not a Muslim party. So um, it all depends on how this will resonate with the Christians. Uh, but uh, the message has been sent that okay, um, APC still have a sizable number of Christians within the uh, party. Secondly, as I said, uh, uh, Governor Lalong is a very good manager of diversity. Uh, he has been doing that in, in, in Plateau State, and I'm sure he's going to bring that to bear uh, in guiding the party in terms of even composition of um, subcommittees within the uh, presidential campaign council and even uh, some of the subcommittees that the party will put uh, in place. So um, uh, it's, 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 it's going to at least um, manage, assist to manage the diversity within the party, whatever is left of the okay, diversity let, let, the let's, party. let's talk about the PDP now, even though it has not appointed a, a DG, so to speak, uh, but, but at least some, some appointments have been made by the candidate. Uh, we, we can see that uh, yes. two spokespersons have been appointed. Uh, I'm talking about Dino Melaye and uh, Daniel Bualia. Uh, what, what's your take on those mm -hmm. appointments? 
Well, for me, um, I know both of them closely. Um, uh, Dan Buala, yes, uh, Dan Buala is a very serious-minded person. Uh, he's, he doesn't speak to frivolities, he speaks with facts, and um, whatever is committed to, he goes all out to ensure uh, that his impact is felt within that very particular uh, uh, um, uh, sphere that he's going to talk to. Uh, so I know Daniel Buala, even while he was in um, APC, uh, you could count on him any time that he speaks. Um, you see some level of seriousness. You see some level of uh, um, panache that goes with somebody who is highly uh, measured in whatever he's going to say. And uh, uh, he doesn't play to the gallery. No, no drama, no nothing, no insult. Uh, Daniel is somebody that can talk to issues anytime, any day. But for my brother, Dino Milae, you know, Dino is a king of drama. Absolutely. He has, he has um, uh, staged a lot of drama. I, I hope uh, the kind of drama is going to stage this time around will be drama that will attract people, not dramas that will injure the, the organization he represents. Because when you are acting as an individual, it's quite different from when you are representing an organization, especially a campaign organization for that very particular matter. And uh, there is a way personalities do really attract people to um, some organizations. And, and because of those personalities, uh, people get to change their mind. And I see more of that uh, in um, Daniel Buala more than um, Dino. But I hope um, that um, Dino will learn from um, his opponent, especially those that have been appointed in APC, so that uh, the intervention will be measured, uh, they will be issue-driven, it will not be attack on personalities or frivolous in insults that will make um, the, the campaign council is represented to look very, very immature. Uh, this is one thing that um, I really want to open his mind to. And this is not to say that uh, he has not um, what it takes to contribute. But I'm saying that there are certain things that are not expected of him because now he is representing a candidate that is determined to win election. Let, let, let's talk about the, the, the problem in the PDP that the party is trying to resolve. It, it's a big problem and uh, th there's no doubt that uh, you know it, it's a problem that the party certainly would not want to have at this time that it, it is preparing for elections. And I'm talking about the problem between Governor Nyesom Wike and uh, uh, the, the presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar. Of course, the party has waded into yeah. the matter. The board of trustees is trying to settle, but um, a truce has not been reached yet. What, what, what do you make of the crisis as yeah. a whole? Because the impression being given is that, look, uh, Atiku needs Wike more than any other thing else to, to win the next election. Yeah. You see, um, uh, let us be honest, uh, and we just have to be honest with ourselves. Um, yeah, you've put the issues on the table. The truth of the matter is the PDP cannot do without um, Governor Yeso Wike because um, starting from 2015, Yeso Wike has become the face of the PDP. Uh, he literally stabilized that very particular party and nurtured it. Uh, but again, you know, in politics, it's uh, about interest. It's about winning. It's about so different um, interests that are at play. Now, the, what the PDP will not admit, or the leadership of PDP will not admit, is that um, it's not as if they, they, they hate Governor Nyes Owuke, and that is why they did not give him the ticket. Uh, if you look at the latest registration, you come to realize that the Northwest is, uh, is at the top, uh, followed by Southwest, followed by um, South South, uh, then North Central, uh, and then South, uh, Northeast, then Southeast um, uh, uh, at the last. Uh, uh, um, uh, at the bottom of the table, by, uh, I beg your pardon. So uh, it's about winning, and uh, about winning, uh, they decided that um, it should go to the north. But again, they have to recognize the fact that without Governor Nyesom Wiki, that party would have been dead by now, and they will have no party to call a party. So he has played his role. But I don't want Governor Wiki to come as a sore loser or a bad loser, uh, because um, first, in other land uh, or climb, uh, it is the survival of the party first before we talk about our interests because without the party, you cannot negotiate any interest. And then uh, he has been so matured uh, because 
the governor we know is somebody that talks when he wants to talk. Um, he doesn't um, give a damn or about any consequences that we follow. He talks. But since the primary uh, uh, of the PDP he has remained calm, and that is what is expected of a leader. So he has been circumspect. That is very, very good. But the other thing, again, he needed to um, understand is that his interest should be subsumed within the context of the interest of the PDP. After all, uh, this is not going to be the last election that will be conducted in Nigeria. He may be the favored uh, person. And if you look at the political parties, all the calculations are not adding up. Uh, for instance, the Muslim Muslim ticket of the APC. It's not because the APC hates the Christians in Nigeria, but they are equally pushed to a position that uh, everybody is angling for the votes that will come from the north. If you combine the three uh, regions that, com that, that um, uh, make up uh, the, the, the north, you come to realize that the greater chunk of the uh, votes will be coming from the north. And this is why almost all the political parties, um, especially the big ones, are uh, 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 trying to see that they get those very particular uh, votes. So it is about politicking, it's about winning, it's about interest. But the question is, which should come first? Is it the interest of the party or the interest of the individual? If you destroy the party and then the party did not win the election, then uh, you lose out and the other party you want to go to, you do not get what you want in that party. So what do you do? And one of the things that may uh, likely play out is for um, um, the governor to do what happened in Ocean State. Remember the fallout between uh, the two leaders of the APC mm. in the Southwest, uh, Ashwa Jibola Tinibu and uh, uh, the current Minister of Interior. To the extent that on the day of the elections in Oshun State, the Minister of Interior was uh, far away in the United States of America, and we knew the outcome. So you don't uh, neglect anybody. So Governor Wike is a pivot. Uh, but but, you, you, look at, but you look at some of the demands. You look at some of the demands that Governor Wike has made. Do you think those demands are tenable? One of them, of course, is that the current chairman of the party should step down. Of course, the candidate has said, look, he would step down after the elections. But Governor Wike yes. is insisting that the chairman should step down before the elections. You, you think that, that, that demand is tenable? Well, um, unfortunately, um, Governor Wike is um, at liberty to make those demands and uh, the candidate is at liberty to either accept or to reject, uh, including the stakeholders of the party. And that is why I warned earlier on that I wouldn't want Governor Wiki uh, to come across as a bad loser that must punish somebody because you feel that the person was not with you. Assuming, um, the, the, um, uh, assuming he picked the, the ticket of the party, what will he do? He would have celebrated the um, chairman of the party. And if um, the same way uh, uh, Alaji Atiku Abakar is saying that um, the um, party chairman should step down. I'm sure Governor Ike will refuse to do mm. that. You see, what we are saying now is the PDP should be able to forgive one another and put their house in order to, to, to confront um, the, the, the APC. We want a very formidable opposition, opposition that will um, stand and defend the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians that want uh, a change. Uh, the same way we want APC to be strong in order to confront the PDP. So that at the end of the day, nobody will blame anybody. So uh, it is a very dicey situation for if today the presidential candidate of the PDP um, said, OK, um, he should go. It means that anybody can wake up tomorrow and say uh, even the presidential candidate should be dropped. Uh, as a condition to support the party. Uh, also, some of this is good, uh, as it were, uh, that you want to maximize your own um, capacity within the party. The capacity should not be used to undermine the party again, because even the chairman is representing uh, a constraint, and th there are people that believe in him in the first place before uh, they equally uh, accepted that he should run for the chairmanship of the party, including Governor Wike himself. So he's losing. So um, Alaji Atiku Abakar should not be uh, something that should be seen as the failure of the chairman and that the chairman should be punished for that. If we continue that way, uh, it's going to affect the party the more. So you are only All creating right. one problem in solving another problem. All right. Abdul Rahman Ab Ab Abu Hamisu, thank you very much for your time and thank you for uh, talking to us. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, that's how much we can take on the program this week. Well, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next week.
Bye-bye.